Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today we're going to talk about integers and absolute value. If we look at the number line up here, we're given examples of integers, and we're very used to working with positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can use a plus sign there, but you don't need to. The negative integers, though, you do need to write with a negative sign, and little things like negative 1 is actually bigger than negative 5, negative 4 is a smaller number than negative 2, just different things that we need to realize as we enter this section. So when we're asked to write an integer for each situation, 6 degrees above normal, well this could be written as a plus 6 or simply 6. If we're looking for 2 inches below normal, it is the 2, but we have to include the negative sign, so negative 2. When we're asked to graph each set of numbers on a number line, or each set of integers on a number line, start off by drawing yourself a number line. And our biggest number here is going to be 8, so we're going to need... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. I'm going to erase and redraw the negative 1 and negative 2 here. It's a little close together. So our negative 2 is there. Our negative 7 was out here, and when we're asked to graph, just put a dot on the number line for each one. So our 8 is right there, our negative 2 is right there, and our negative 7 is out here. If we do the next one, D, our biggest number is 10, and our smallest number is negative 4, so we can have our 0 a little bit closer to the left here. There's our negative 4. Next to it's our negative 3. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So when we go to put these on the number line, we have negative 4. We have 10. We have negative 3. And we have 7. Now from this, we're used to, again, the right side of the number line, where you get further away and things get bigger. As you get further away from 0 going left, though, the numbers actually get smaller. So we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on. But on a number line, it is important to realize that no negative 3 is to the right of negative 4, because negative 3 is a bigger number and it is closer to zero. Now, absolute value of a number is the distance between the number and zero on a number line. It is not the same thing as opposites. The absolute value of negative five is five, because it is five units away from zero. The absolute value of five is also five, because it too is five units from zero. Again, just because it's in these absolute value signs does not mean make it opposite. It means we're looking for the distance between that number and zero, and that number is always going to be positive. So when we look at e, the absolute value of 8, that is 8 units away from zero, so it's just 8. Now when we go to simplify expressions, we have 2 here plus the absolute value of negative 3. Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. We're going to treat whatever's on the inside of these absolute values kind of like we do parentheses. We're going to solve for that and then worry about this part. So in our last one here, g, we have the absolute value of negative 6 minus 5. Well, do the absolute value of negative 6 first. That is 6 minus 5. And 6 minus 5 is 1. Be sure to show your steps when you're solving these questions. 
Megan's dog gained weight and then lost weight. The number of pounds her dog gained and then lost is represented by the expression the absolute value of 6 plus the absolute value of negative 3. How many pounds did Megan's dog gain and lose? Well, this is simply the absolute value of 6 plus the absolute value of negative 3. Now, do not add these first. Take care of the absolute value signs. The absolute value of 6 is 6 plus the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And 6 plus 3 is 9 pounds. And that's our final answer. Good luck.